welcome everyone to the session working in the shadow dom how to test web component by david burns so without further delay over to you david uh thank you for that uh thank you Josh. um hello everyone um i hope everyone is doing well um and um just want to start by saying thank you to kind of the whole selenium conf india team for the hard work that they put into to kind of making this actually a reality um and so um i hope i do ev everyone uh, a great service here so um with that i'll get started um so uh for people who don't know who i am uh well I'll actually let me stop uh, i'm going to be talking about working in the shadow um specifically the shadow dom um and how how we go about testing uh web components um so i'm at automated tester on most social media so if you ever want to ask questions especially afterwards uh, if you um if there anything does crop up and i don't get to answer your questions straight away uh feel free to kind of ask there um cool. there we are uh so just a little bit about me um i head up the open source program office at browser stack um we're a testing in the cloud provider um i am the chair of the browser testing and tools W3C group. Um, I've been doing that since I was at Mozilla uh, and I've been a Selenium committer um, for pretty much most of my career. I think we're bordering on about um, 15 years that I've been working on Selenium in one version or another. Um, and so I've seen how the industry has grown. I've seen how browsers have grown. Um, and one of the main ones that came that I really liked was the idea of um, web components. Um, so let me get with that. Um, I just a quick agenda um, and uh, is that like, I'm gonna talk about what um, web components are as a, at a high level and I'll start drilling down from there, how we go about write, writing them. Um, so I'm gonna give you some code examples um, on the screen. It, I haven't created a repository uh, mostly because like they're really simple to make. Um, and you'll see a lot of um, different tools out there are still using them. Um, and then we'll I'll show you how we go about testing them. Um, and um, there'll be a demo during that process. And then I, I haven't put it there, but um, like most good software engineers, I'd like to do a bit of a recap. Um, and then hopefully we can dive into some of the questions as we uh, as they crop up. Um, as uh, was mentioned earlier, like if you have questions, throw them in the chat. Um, I'm not going to answer them as I'm going through um, because otherwise I'll be really distracted and I really suffer from distraction badly anyway. Uh, so, but throw them in the chat um, and uh, I will try to get to them at, as I go through, and if I don't get to your question and you still um, have questions um, or kind of concerns or anything like that, um, ask me later on or kind of just hit me up on Twitter um, and I will do my best to give you meaningful answers um, and where possible I also give you code examples um, with what we're going to do. Um, right. Um, so what are web components? Um, for for a very long time, web comp like the web has been this like mishmash of building, uh, and it, there was never any real thought into how we can make it better. Um, like there's fads have come and gone. Um, so like when I started my career. Um, the way people used to create their websites was like using Dreamweaver or Notepad++ or like tools like that. Um, and what you needed to do is like you needed to handcraft pretty much everything. Um, there were some uh, WASIWIG tools that allowed you to kind of drag and drop um, to get everything into place. Um, but those tools only gave you like incredibly basic websites. And the web has moved uh, forward in leaps and bounds um, in huge, huge numbers, uh, right? Like um, 
I, I'm, I'm going to show my age, but like um, when when I got onto the internet, the internet was pretty brand new. Um, like I think I was able to get dial up uh, when I was uh, 17. The internet had been around for about four or five years at that point. Um, uh, as a kind of, and when I say the internet, I, oh, I mean the World Wide Web uh, had been around for about four or five years. Uh, by that point in in the way that like Tim Berners-Lee had created um, and um, the browser wars were in full flight uh, at that point. Uh, Netscape was still a company um, and people built their websites and kind of just made everything the way they wanted it. Um, and then like we we hit the early 2000s and um, kind of Internet Explorer had won um, and then um, because they had beaten Netscape and then obviously out of the ashes of Netscape came the Phoenix Project, uh, what we now call Mozilla. Um, and so like the web started being rebuilt. Um, and we started getting everything that we needed. But the one key pr problem that was around was um, like building a website is hard, right? Like I know backend engineers will say, oh, it's only a bit of front end, it'll be easy, um, but it's not. Um, CSS is hard, um, building websites is hard um, and then testing them is hard. Like we know this is a, from kind of like we've all built careers out of this. Um, but web components allowed us to build, allow us this idea of kind of taking all the best parts of web of like development. And so by that, I mean, kind of encapsulation, can I build this one little thing and move it in, um, and allow people to use it? Could I just like, um, share it around to other people? Could I do all of this um, in a meaningful way um, that allows people to build stuff? And so this is where Web Components came from. Um, it was an idea that came from Alex Russell. He first talked about it um, in at the Frontiers Conference in, I think, 2011. And uh, the Chromium team built out, a, built out an example of it. Um, to be honest, it wasn't very good, um, but at least showed promise, right? Like I'm not dissing them, but, um, and then uh, Mozilla and uh, Apple or kind of the WebKit folks. So it's Apple and Agalia and a few others got involved in like, this is how we would make it better. Uh, and they did it and we got Web Components version two. And um, the web started, like it changed some concepts of the web. But now I know kind of a lot of people are thinking, well, what about front end frameworks, David? Like we have Vue, React, Svelte, Ember, um, and so, so many more. Those do all those things that you've been talking about. They have the tooling that allows you to kind of um, build components, build smaller, like, sections of a website and allow people to share it about. Um, and uh, it works. And, I'm, and to that, I go, well, that is true. Like, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue that point. Um, but when this, like a lot of these tools have also been built um, in the same, for the same reasons that like jQuery was created. Um, interoperability between browsers is hard. Um, this is a, the other thing that like a lot of front-end um, engineers have to work with every day is like, um, how do we handle kind of minor differences between uh, different browsers? Uh, I remember part of my career, like uh, there was one point where um, making sure that certain things were the same between Internet Explorer and Firefox um, were, were correct. And at that point I was like, okay, but like Internet Explorer can't do rounded corners. Um, so like, do we really care about this? Like, 
and um, and jQuery was still around and was still really relevant and then it it's changed but like the one key theme around Vue, React, um, and all these other tools is um, they add more to the web web pages, um, and it's in not, and not in a really really good way, unfortunately. Um, so uh, I'm going to pause. Um, and I, this is going to be another shout out to the Selenium Comp, uh, like uh, organizers and how we've changed uh, over the years. Uh, this is a screenshot of a YouTube video that was of I'm the kind of the blur blurry person on the left uh, of what you can see, um, and my friend uh, Dave, uh, who's on the right there, he's the other blurry person. Um, how things have changed but um, so kind of big shout out to the selenium conf people um but but back to web components um adding view react all those other tools um bloats pages it bloats pages like you cannot believe um uh like even with the minified, we're talking like a megabyte uh, or two. And to some people that's like, that seems like not a lot, right? Um, and on desktop, it's not a lot uh, because kind of most people are on kind of fiber backed internet connections to their Wi-Fi routers um, that allow high speed transfer of data. Um, but when, I was doing this, and this, so this is from GTAC, the Google Test Automation Conference in 2009, so kind of um, 13 years ago. Um, at that point, um, it was kind of like, I think it was, and I'm, I'm open to correction, it was about like half a second delay in loading a page could cost you like 5% of your, um, of your market, um, like, because people would be like, I'm not waiting around for this. And that was, you know, when the internet was slow. Um, the internet's got faster, um, but people's time, attention spans have got less. Um, and so, like, page size, what page weight, load times is still super important um, because, kind of, when you're building for all these different tools or different web pages, uh, you need to think about mobile nowadays um and like recently i went to go visit um some colleagues in uh india and like mobile phones are kind of fairly ubiquitous to um like many people um but that's their only in access to the internet for a lot of people um and when i was at mozilla um and i kind of met people during the firefox os uh, project um like their first access to the internet was going to be on a Firefox OS device. And so, you know, um, we need to think about all these different things and improving page weights and page load times. And this is what web components do, is that it gives you that ability to recreate some of that front-end framework goodness uh, in simplicity and things like that um, without a lot of the bloat and is optimized by browser engine uh, engineers who kind of like a lot of their job is just making sure that their browser is fast, right? Like uh, Chrome has said for years that their browser is fast. Um, it's got a bit heavy uh, over the years. Um, the Mozilla project has spent a lot of effort in making sure that Firefox is fast. Um, and then when you look at like where the time, like the engineering effort that is spent on WebKit um, by kind of Safari engineers or by WebKit engineers, it's just making sure that it's fast, especially on mobile. Um, like, like iOS might not have all the best features, but it's definitely fast. Um, and so, and it uses a lot less battery and things like that. So it's important to kind of think about those things, especially um, as we move forward, because we need to care about it. Um, so I've, I've done a lot of talking, a lot of preamble, um, but what does it look like? Like, how do I create a web component? 
And so here's a really simple example um, is that you just create your own elements on a page like this. Uh, so like obviously you have a body um, and here I've created a selenium shadow element element uh, and um, I can create anything I want. Um, and like web components are so ubiquitous that like a lot of people don't realize that they're uh, in the browser. Like um, for Firefox, most of the UI, so kind of the back button, forward button, reload button, any of those types of buttons um, are web components. Um, like before um, Mozilla like went in on web components, they had a thing called Zool, uh, which is XUL, um, which is essentially web components um, and it allowed you to kind of build out these tools and then ship them around different parts of Firefox really simply. Um, and then obviously it, there are times where we use, nat like the browsers use native controls. That would be like file uploads uh, where you get a, a, a like a, a dialogue uh, for, for the files. That's just a native thing that the browsers have hooked into. But pretty much everything else, uh, there are web components and you can kind of build them out. And again, it's super simple. You create an element uh, on your page, um, to access it um, and you can kind of use like uh, either some uh, little bits of JavaScript, which we're going to get to in a minute to kind of make sure it loads up properly. Um, but that's all you need to do. Um, and so this is like a bit of JavaScript to make sure that th that element knows what it is and how to do it. Um, so I'm just going to go quickly line by line. Um, the way Web Components works is that it exposes these HTML um, objects. Um, these HTML like objects. So there's HTML element, there'll be like a paragraph element, things like that. And you can extend as and when you want it. Um, you create this class and like, sorry. Um, like the JavaScript has got a lot better um, nowadays so that you can just create these classes, build out what you need. Um, and then uh, the custom elements, that's a, uh, something that's on the um, window objects and you just define your element and that's it. Like it's super simple, like, like really, really simple to be able to create these things. It registers it and away you go. So, so nice. Um, and so with this great new feature, how do we test it, right? Like that's the, the key part here as we kind of move forward um, because we, we need to make sure that we can test it, right? Um, and so the, the, um, the web apps working group in the W3C and what WG kind of rejoiced, we fixed the web. Um, and like you thought about testing, right? And they didn't, um, like that's that's the thing, unfortunately. Um, and I'm gonna go through some of the reasons why. Um, but yeah, uh, the web is not as fixed as we would like it to be. Um, and for the main reason is like, uh, who, who thinks about testing? When do we think about testing? Uh, and um, it's always that last afterthought. How can we do it, right? Um, and to be fair to the working group, they did think about testing, but purely for making sure that it worked in their, their basic tests to prove that you could do those items. So there'll be what's called ref tests, which are like reference tests. Um, there'll be some JavaScript tests and we can do it like do things like that but like as a whole no one actually thought about how we go about testing it um so the reality is the answer is no no one thought about testing um or not thought about it in a meaningful way um because kind of it's nice to test the component but how do you test a, comp a website that has multiple components uh, how do you make sure that they're working together? Like, this is our job. This is how we get our salaries each month. This is how we 
work on it. And so um, different groups try to solve this problem themselves. Um, like uh, Playwrights uh, has a special locator that allows you to um, access elements within a web component. Um, and you do that if memory serves with a double um, greater than sign in your locator. So you would go like div greater than greater than uh, input. Uh, and that would say find this uh, div with this shadow uh, shadow DOM attached to it and then go find the input element. And then you could send a click or in any form of interaction with it or just kind of uh, query to get these things. Um, WebDriver IO does something similar um, as well as um, Selenium Base, which is a Python uh, Selenium framework um, built out by Michael Mintz. Um, and so these are really good. Um, sorry, I've just lost track of it. Um, but their their solutions are not um, elegant or easily transferable to DevTools consoles, right? Like um, over the years, the Selenium core contributors, one of the overarching goals is that like, you can copy an uh, locator from your Selenium test and put it into DevTools and it will work. You can't do that with these, with, with these um, new locators that everyone's created because and, and I'm not blaming these teams, right? Like they, they've done what they felt they needed to do, um, but because no one thought about testing um, and why testing is so important to, to do it. Um, and so we got this like kind of unelegant process. We got these, um, like we've got this nice elegant way of creating websites, uh, not an elegant way of testing it. Um, and, and the kind of the tool that they, the way they're doing it only works for one part, um, one type of web component. It might be the majority of way people use it, but it's still only going to work on one part. Um, and earlier I kind of glossed over, uh, this uh, section in this, in that, uh, the line where it goes, this dot attach shadow. Uh, so what that does is that says um, like when uh, when we define the custom element of Selenium shadow element in the constructor, it's going to attach the shadow uh, shadow DOM to that element and allow us to work on it. Um, and the key part there is that um, it's got their mode open. Um, so there are two modes: there's open and there's closed. When it's open, uh, the way like Playwright, WebDriver IO, uh, and um, Selenium Base work, it it works because they can kind of they can do some JavaScript, they can do some like kind of you you call that command, they then um, do some magic, and then they they're in there. If that was closed, um, you might as well kind of try access a um, a flash object or a canvas and try work with it that way um, because it doesn't work well. Um, and the reason is, is that like um, the uh, Safari team said like, well, you know, people might want to put certain bits of information into their um, shadow DOM and they don't want it like fully accessible to JavaScript on the page uh, for security reasons. Uh, so it might be kind of like uh, your, you might create a, a new element that always contains your CS um, RF tokens or something like that as a, like an extreme example, right? Like, but there might be other reasons why you don't want people to do it. Um, and so you could create a closed one and then the, the working group also decided that like there is not we're not going to create a mechanism to pierce shadow doms uh especially because they see it as a security problem if something is closed and so at a high level it makes sense um for you and me it doesn't uh, and it's painful and we need to work around it 
um, until on a steed rode in Jim Evans to save the day. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, Jim Evans is a member of the uh, core committers group in the Selenium project. Um, he is also a principal engineer at Salesforce who have been working with um, web components for a very long time. I think they, uh, they call it the LWC project. I think it's a lightweight web component project. Um, and Jim wrote in and used his many, many years of experience to kind of think about how people would want to use it in Selenium um, and how people would want to use it at Salesforce. So he has this huge raft of engineers that he can access and ask different questions to. Uh, and so um, Jim came up and wrote the WebDriver um, spec pros to handle this, uh, handle this situation. And the way he did that um, is fairly elegant, but then like all solutions that Jim tends to make are fairly elegant. Um, and one of the key reasons why he's a, a principal engineer. Uh, we have something like this. Um, so as always, if you want to interact in Selenium with an element, you need to find the element to start with. Um, and so here you can go Selenium shadow elements. Um, now, the way shadow DOM works is that like, if you find the element, uh, you can carry on searching through the DOM, or you can kind of dive into the shadow DOM, depending on what your need is. Um, the way the analogy I tend to kind of help people think about it, but it's not exactly right, it is kind of the way iframes are, uh, in that you kind of find something and then you dive into the iframe, or you can kind of search the rest of the DOM. Um, and so this is where uh, he we created the get shadow root um, API calls, um, which allows you to dive in. And then from there, um, you can kind of just use all the usual things that you would. So like, uh, if you want to find a single element, you would just use find elements. If you wanted to find multiple elements, you would find it. And then if you wanted to do interactions, you can. Um, the other thing is depending on like what your um, web component is, is that like, if you just found your elements and you did your interactions, so your click, your send keys at that level, it would still go through to, um, how you would want it to be. So uh, like um, you can have multiple ways of kind of going in and out of things or kind of just being able to use it from the top, um, which makes a really elegant solution. The other thing is, um, is that the, because of um, it being in the web driver specification, um, we've been able to make sure that it works on both open and closed uh, web components. And that is a really massive thing is that like, there might be times where you want to be able to test uh, in, in it. And so the get shadow root um, allows you to just kind of access the, the next level of the shadow DOM and then move on forward from that. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna have a quick drink before we uh, carry on. Um, and so with that, um, I'm going to dive into a demo. Um, uh, right. Um, so here's some kind of uh, JavaScript that I've written. Um, I'll just close these. I don't need them at the moment. Um, so um, I've got a kind of a uh, night watch test that allows me to, I'm just going to navigate to MDN. Um, so um, MDN, I'm sure everyone uses pretty much every day. I do uh, to look up things. I uh, have a really good example. Uh, we're going to get the shadow roots. Uh, we're going to kind of find some things. We'll do some assertions. Uh, we'll find some more things and a final session, and we'll do that. Um, 
I've just put um, <coughs> these commands. Uh, so this is um, new commands in Nightwatch that allow me to kind of either pause or debug. Um, like there's a pause command, there's a debug command um, to allow me to kind of step through some of the code um, in a kind of easy way uh, and allow people to kind of do things. Uh, so it's a fairly simple test. Um, I'm gonna, this is where kind of, as always, um, oh well, partly the, the re main reason for doing the pause uh, is also so that I can move the browser because uh, if you've ever watched any of my Twitch streams, um, sometimes the, the browser just does its own thing um, and always goes to where I don't want it to go. Um, and so hopefully the code looks fairly simple um, and there aren't any questions. But um, as I said earlier, if people have questions, please do ask them in the chat. Um, and at the end, um, I will kind of answer them um, and we can go from there. Uh, so, um, I cheated. I, I used to reuse the file. Um, aha, right. Um, so here's our widget. Um, I'm just going to load up DevTools. Um, Oh, I always forget where it is. Oh, here we are. Here we are. So um, here is our sh shadow. Um, and you can apply styles uh, to like the, the nice thing about web components. And I, I don't think I put enough emphasis on it is that you can uh, create your own styles inside that uh, web component. Um, you can uh, kind of change it to how you want. Um, and so this pop-up info, and so here it just looks like an image, right? And we can change it, uh, but we can then create, like it's, uh, and hopefully this is coming across. Uh, I know it's quite small, but the idea is this, that there's a little like widget that appears when you hover over uh, and we can access any some of this information. Uh, so, um, We've got our uh, test, I paused it. So let me hit space to continue. Um, and so uh, here we expected some information um, and now we're gonna kind of search into the icon and then um, expect some more information. Um, but we've been able to kind of find the info uh, here. We can kind of, we wanna make sure this has, because uh, you can't see it, but uh, card, like your card validation code, sorry. So like that's the expected code that's passed because uh, we've been able to dive into um, the code here and just make sure that like that is there. Um, and as you can see, again, I'm, I appreciate I'm reiterating what I've said before, but like uh, this is the new element, which is our pop-up info. Um, it's not standardized HTML, you won't see this in the uh, HTML spec. Um, and uh, so we've got that and then um, and then our test has finished and we were able to kind of just check that everything uh, has worked as we expected. Um, so that's that. Um, Sorry. Let's get back to present view. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so we've had our demo. Um, and that's it, really. Like it's it's really simple. Um, we've got uh, like I'll just go through what we've learned, which is like we know what web components are and how they're impacting the web, um, and how we can make our websites a lot 
um, less bloated uh, by using kind of native features in the browser rather than relying on front end frameworks. Um, I'm not telling you not to use those front end frameworks, do what you think is best for your users. Um, but there are more native features now and they're only going to get better. Um, we also looked at how we could go about interacting with them. Um, I'm just going to bring that up again, which is, uh, you know, finding our, our new element. Uh, in this case, I searched by tag name, so which means I could search by the tag that was there uh, that I created, which is a Selenium shadow element. Um, I could dive into the shadow root, and then I could search around inside it. And if I needed to, I could do whatever I wanted. Um, and um, so there's that. So it's really, really simple. And it's not adding too much, like uh, what I call cognitive load. Like you don't need to think about it too much. The only thing you need to think about is in the same way that like if you needed to move into a new iframe, you just switch to that iframe and then you carry on with your normal test. It's the same here, um, except now um, you're not changing where driver is going to be, uh, but you're creating a new shadow root. Um, so in Java, uh, it creates a search context um, object um, in the same way that web element has it, um, has some of those search context tooling. Um, and then you go from there. Um, and with that, um, I'm done. I appreciate I'm possibly about five minutes early. Um, in my talk, but um, if there are any questions, uh, I am happy to kind of answer them and um, uh, explain things. Um, so yeah, thank you. Venkatesh, uh, I yep. think you're up. Sorry. Thank you. So I can't see any questions in the Q&A. Okay, that's fine. That's that's fine. Uh, yep. One of the things yep. I've just realized yep. that I didn't mention is um, this is uh, only available in um, Chrome at the moment, but there are patches uh, being reviewed uh, for Firefox, um, which will hopefully be very short. Um, Oh, there's some questions coming in now, so yeah. I'll, I'll answer those. Um, and um, I spoke to one of these Safari engineers who said, um, like, because it's in WebKit, and WebKit is um, like they do an upstreaming or downstreaming to make Safari. Uh, so, like, the code is there, but it needs to be just uh, plumbed together, is what they said, and you should be able to do. Um, Cool. Um, so there are some questions. Thank you for them. Uh, is there any chance to automate a shadow root that is closed? It should work. Um, if it's not working, that's a bug in itself. Um, like, um, uh, so I've been working uh, on the Firefox uh, patches, and in Firefox, it's definitely going to work on uh, closed shadow roots because, um, like, it makes sense to do that. Um, and you should be able to um, be able to do that. Um, handling of pseudo elements will be some. Uh, will I'm assuming will handling of pseudo elements be similar like shadow elements? Um, I don't think so. Um, so kind of the way Selenium generally works is that like whatever you can do in query selector. Uh, so if you can create a query selector, you should be able to find those elements. And like if it returns a list of elements, those are then um, serialized into web elements um, when they sent back to your side of things. And so um, they should be really simple to do that. So you should be able to handle it. Um, and like, it should just be a web element. Uh, if it returns something, if it doesn't return something, then um, it might be only searchable via kind of the way CSS does pseudo elements. Um, and I know there are cases where they don't always match up. Um, will it not be raising exception um, uh, when we try to access um, 
the shadow element using fine element? No. Uh, so the only, uh, it shouldn't do. Um, and I know from at least my testing, um, it, it's I've not seen a case where it has been doing it, but if it, um, again, if it starts throwing weird exemptions, uh, please, uh, please kind of raise it with the various uh, browser vendors. Um, so, uh, and if you're not sure, you can always come to like the Selenium Slack um, and we can always help you find uh, the right place to uh, um, raise that issue um, and be able to kind of get it to them. Um, but you should be able to interact with it like it uh, as either a fully fledged element. So kind of just find the elements and then interact, or you can then dive down and uh, work with it that way. Um, yeah. So, so we have one more question. Is there any chance to automate shadow root closed? Uh, that, uh, yeah, so I answered that the first one, but I'll just go over it again, which is yes, um, definite, you should be able to, if it's not working, um, then you should raise an issue with that, like with the re relevant browser vendors. Um, I've made sure that it works well in Firefox. So I've been working with the Firefox team, uh, mostly because I know the code base in that area. So um, I was trying to help them out. And I know it works with closed shadow reads in Firefox. Um, so um, if it doesn't work in Chrome, um, I haven't checked that, but I'll go check it. Um, and uh, I might raise an issue with the Chromium team to make sure it's it's sorted. So, um, and the nice thing is that like once it's fixed in Chromium, uh, if you're using Edge or um, Google Chrome, you should be able to access that, that feature quickly.